Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Paul Schaefer. I'm Will Lee. And you You're are watching, watching the Letterman, Letterman Podcast. Welcome once again to the Letterman Podcast. As always, I am Mike Chisholm. I am so excited to be here. And to do this, this is a special episode because I got a special guest here. You haven't been on since I don't even know what episode it was. I I want to say like early thirty. Early. Well, it wasn't. It was in October, so like hmm. April, May, June, July, August, September, October. So about I guess halfway into the run hmm. so far. Um, you and I went to New York. This is Candace Chisholm, everybody. This is my wife. Um. <clears throat> <laughs> she uh uh puts up with me can you imagine you want to talk about um an iron woman of punishment right yes. here um holy cow no so we went to, uh we went to new york in october and after we came back um we shot an episode of the letterman podcast which has like a lot have ha has had a lot of feedback it turns <laughs> out uh not surprisingly you are more popular than me people would much <laughs> People would much rather have you on, as a host of the Letterman podcast. Curious. They're curious about the woman that that's married to yeah, you. Yeah, how in the world did that happen? I think they're just curious. Did she lose a bet? <laughs> Is that what happened? How who puts up with this? Um no, and 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 so uh I just came back from New York. Unfortunately, you couldn't come with me. Mm -hmm. Uh <laughs> <laughs> but i get to do the podcast about it so you know there you go uh no i i i just thought we knew we were going to do a, a a new york uh recap i've had a whole bunch of people because i threw out a little bit i only threw a little bit up uh about what i did uh in new york i went for rick sheckman's memorial um and i mean the entire time it was a whirlwind like it wasn't one of those things like believe it or not Tandy and I are not rolling in it as the kids <laughs> like to <this>. say. <laughs> We're not. <laughs> I think sometimes we roll in some. That's fair enough. Uh, we roll in the fresh cut grass <laughs> of a public park that we enjoy um, frequenting uh, with our granddaughter. No. Um, so, so this was a trip that was booked. It was like, I, I wasn't even sure I could swing it um you know financially and candy you know you said to me you like no you have to go because you knew how much you know how much rick meant yeah. to me and by the way this is the first episode that we've shot um since coming back and you'll notice the set change uh right in behind my wife's left shoulder you'll see um look at that that's rick right there that's rick sheckman rick sheckman will never not be a part of the letterman podcast um I go, yeah, just oh, don't go mm, like that because so that's going to send me down the path and I'm going to start crying. Mm -hmm. Um, I miss my boy. I miss my boy so much. I was emailing somebody last night uh, who's going to be coming on the show and and um, uh, it went down the path where as I was talking to them, I was asking them questions about another guest who's coming on the show. Uh, um, and and saying, hey, give me give me something a little inside that I can ask when this person comes on and uh I used to do that with Rick almost every episode mm -hmm. and, and um, I miss him very much. Jeez. Don't that little mm that you did just made me go. Oh, mm, mm. It's good. Fill time know. candy, fill time for a moment. No, um, no, men are supposed to show their emotions. Are we? Well, says the woman who's building a men's mental wellness app, but that's not what this is about. Plug. <laughs> Plug. He changed it.com everybody. <laughs> Go to hechangeit.com and see what my wife and her unbelievably talented team are doing. Uh, they're changing the world. Joe Grossman, when he came on the show, he talked about his wife and all the amazing things she's doing while he is now a comedy writer for The Tonight Show. And it just, yeah, I mean, me too. I, I feel the same way. You're changing the world. and mm -hmm. I'm sitting there doing this little dog and pony show about the Letterman the Letterman show. Hey, um, yeah. <laughs> changing my world. Oh, that's very sweet. That's the last one you get. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the last one. No, but um, you know how much Rick meant to me. And 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 yeah. so you we we looked uh through our various uh credit card devices and 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 um reward system things that we had, and sure enough, there was enough points to send me to New York and to get me some accommodation um a very interesting part of town uh in new york <laughs> uh, um and 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 you 
very, very much to your credit, I, I felt guilty. And to this point, I still feel guilty. You love New York so, so, so much. Oh, okay. Look at that. There's the New York subway system right there. Courtesy of our friend, Stephen Laurie. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you 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 nudged me to go. I wasn't gonna go, and you kind of kicked me out the door. Is it because you just wanted four nights of peace and quiet, or like what was it? <laughs> no, man, you're taking away. I was gonna get like I'm gonna get all like, oh, you didn't move into New York, and then now you're sad. I can't. <laughs> oh, you were gonna you were gonna do I some kidney shots there, were you? Totally took away my stuff. <laughs> uh -huh. Anyhow, yeah, no, I did. Um, <laughs> you know, I think that there's obviously you know, it was a very sad occasion why you went, but I think ultimately it was very, very important for you to go for a variety of reasons. And I, and it's just one of those things, you know, you, there's times in your life where the, if I don't do this, I will regret it far outweighs yeah. the system of how to get to doing it. There's no question about that. Uh, um, especially in hindsight, you know, hindsight, you know, your vision is 2020 20 when you're yeah. looking back. Uh, um that is you are definitely definitely right um you considering can't go back and, and do that you can't redo that you can't go back and 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 i'm i all credit to um to to shecky's family to rick sheckman's family who allowed um the letterman people to kind of come in and oh we got the epileptic seizure <laughs> setting on the bridge behind us now warning 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 <laughs> that was the wrong here hold on a second i gotta change that Let's go back to the, yeah, let's get a little bit more serene. I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Raver candy, everybody. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is one of those episodes where if you're listening to the audio, you might want to jump over to the YouTube on this one because <laughs> there's going to be visual aids in this episode for sure. Uh, and especially the fact that we've never had anything more beautiful on the show than candy. Than oh, my wife. Stop. So, so you might want to jump over and, and watch this one. We do have visuals. Um, but no, the, um, the, the the Letterman people, <clears throat> Kathy and Randy and Walter, um, did a phenomenal job of producing uh, Rick's memorial. It was um, and 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 I use that word intentionally. I I actually went up to I don't know if I did this to Randy. I should have gone up to Randy and told her this. I said some nice things to her as well, but um, to Kathy in particular. Um, who clearly, clearly, like both of these amazing women were who worked for Dave forever and 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 just amazing, talented uh, people from a technical standpoint, from a backstage standpoint. I I gave them, a, I gave Kathy a compliment that I don't know if she understands the weight of it. You are like the best cook I've ever encountered in life, and I mean, I've encountered a lot of amazing are chefs you and things like that. Up, like beautiful cook, like wow. Uh, like, what True, all okay. true. Did you all say true? Did you tell me? <laughs> no, yeah, right. That's why we're on camera. I didn't. Bring Wait, it. what? I just realized that it was more than one pair of Jordans that I bought. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but but when you cook, your secret weapon, your secret ingredient is you cook with love. And I and I yeah. and I I walked up to Kathy after, and I mean she was just inundated, and I mean I can't even imagine the pressure that they were under because they loved Rick so much and they produced that event with love. Mm. That event actually produced so well, it actually went up on the Letterman, uh, the Letterman uh, official channel and Walter amazing job editing all of the things that he did and, and, and collecting these videos from these amazing sources, including Dave himself. Um, and, and uh, they produced the entire thing and put it up on the Letterman channel, which I'm so grateful for. Um, Rick deserves that and so much, so much, so much more. If I would have seen that and known that I could have been there and wasn't, yeah, absolutely. It, it, it would have just, oh, oh, it, it would have, it would have absolutely gutted me. And so, yeah. um, yeah, we couldn't let that happen. No. And so, but that being said, I just appreciate you so, so much for, for nudging me and kicking, literally kicking me out the door. Um, it's okay. I drove your Bronco for five days. You did drive the Bronco for five days. You know, I'll tell you this. Uh, there's a lot of highlights from this trip because, and here's the other thing. When I go to New York or when you and I travel, um, our levels of standard when it comes to travel <laughs> and how we, um, and how we I'm bougie, bougie. Is that what it is? I'm bougie. I, bougie? I, you know, like if I camping is a three star. Uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. There's no camping with candy. There is glamping. Um in a three star. In a three star. <laughs> um, 
yes, you can bring the campfire guitar as long as there's a shower after. <laughs> um, no, and so so I I did get a chance to like I mean I basically lived on New York pizza except for the times when I went out for dinner with Letterman people. It was four days. What's that? I'd eat New York pizza. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, but um, except for the times that I went out with 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 people, and so so it was. The thing about me going there for four days without candy, number one, I could, you know, live cheaply uh, when it came to eating and all these sorts of things like, like, you know, street food. Yeah, let's do it. Um, no problem. But also it was literally wall to wall Letterman stuff. There was not anything on this trip that was not letterman stuff except for after the memorial when i kind of walked home in a weird sort of stupor feeling a combination of feelings that i've never felt before like very unique to that moment um and and and, and uh, you know i'm walking through soho a little bit of shopping bought a pair of jordans other than that everything on this trip was letterman centric um and i knew that i mean you know we talked about that a little bit too because there was still you know you were like, hey, we need to do you need a I'm fine. Okay. I'm fine now. Thank you. I did get I it, it, yeah. No, not <laughs> that's it's a special hoodie you're wearing. I, know, I just joking. Uh I knew that uh I, I knew that. And you know, there was I I knew you were feeling very conflicted because New York is my favorite city on the planet. Not but, just her favorite American city, her favorite city. On the planet. Yeah. And uh, I just... I, I thought your favorite city was any city I'm in. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I knew, you know, like I know that you were conflicted, but um, I wanted you to be able to just have carte blanche with, with and, and like a lot of uh, Letterman people, which sounds weird, it's like its own little ecosystem uh but it a lot is. of the letterman people have uh, you know i love like i haven't met everybody but you know they're like steve and laurie and yeah. and rupert and mm. irene and you know all walter all these people like i just have fallen in love with them too but yeah. i wanted you to have carte blanche of like not worrying about me because you know, I can be a little high maintenance, but you know, like I, I just know that I would have been like, okay, but I, you know, you would have been worried about me having fun. Well, we would have, yeah, especially in, in such a short time, like the last time we went, I think it was like eight or nine nights yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And so it was like, okay, Mike, you get three days of Letterman <laughs> stuff throughout the eight or nine nights, yeah, yeah. but then we're doing Broadway and we're doing all these things yeah. that, you know, and, 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 and your, 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 you know, tribute to sex in the city, your, your pilgrimage to Carrie's apartment and all that kind of stuff. Um, which coincidentally is near the Ghostbusters firehouse. Fantastic. If you want to learn about any of this stuff, go back and watch the original episode with Candy, Candace Chisholm uh, on the Letterman podcast. You'll see the highlights of all of that trip. But this time here in coming home, we just thought it would be fun if you kind of picked my brain and I kind of went through the trip a little bit. Uh, we're actually, this trip is going to actually have two episodes uh, that, 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 that are spawned. Uh, from this trip here you got a blue card look at you with your it's blue nothing. card oh come on there's it, nothing on it i was just gonna be no trying. that's awesome don't tell them there's nothing on it that's amazing that's like so many things are on this this is like <laughs> that's so great lots of right so yeah now. we're gonna go kind of go through the trip and 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 take it from there um yeah and so if you want to pick my brain and ask questions we'll go through the trip maybe chronologically that's how we'll start uh we may cut the episode up and 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 throw some uh I took lots of video on the trip, so I may throw those videos in uh, as we go. Again, for the audio viewer, you might want to bounce back, but you'll definitely get the flavor of this um, extremely um, emotional, on all areas of the emotional spectrum, uh, trip that I took to New York. So thank you for coming in here and doing this, and thank you again for letting. Thank you again for letting me do this show. Like. No seriously letting well it kind of is if you didn't support me in this i mean we put a show out at least once a week if not more it's a lot of time um this studio in our house uh if i didn't have your support i don't know that a studio i don't know that 
this could exist if I didn't have your support. So what's funny <laughs> is that what you don't see behind is like my portion of this studio, <laughs> which is like, so we, sh we co-exist, cohabitate yes. this, this space, which has actually worked out pretty good. Yeah. Say, for the month. Although the Letterman stuff slowly is creeping like a cancer, it's like, like, like a fungus, like, you know, <laughs> soon every corner of this room will be letterman podcast studio <laughs> yeah I soon believe that to be true <laughs> all right let's get into it give so me a lifeboat worldwide pants come on <laughs> yeah okay you, by the way, you you do support that though, like you, you know what the aspirations okay, so are and whatnot. Like I a little caveat too, because he keeps saying thank you and you let me, and like which is you know. But Mike and I have such a um, we do have such a good relationship with with support. Uh, you know, like he has this man. I'm gonna get like kind of one second, but you you have supported me in. Every, I have cr some crazy ideas and have for, you know, pretty much most of my life. Um, and, you know, when I implement some of those crazy ideas, he has not only supported me, he's my biggest champion, my biggest cheater. Like, you know, half the time I, I'm like, Hey, you know what would be fun? And, and he just is like, huh. like, I think he sort of developed a bit of a tick with that, but he has always supported me. Like if I say, this is something I want to do, he does. So, not only do I support you and champion you, uh, it makes me happy, makes me, it makes me so, uh, it fills my soul that you have found such a, a calling. Like, and you're very, 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 very good at it, but he, you love it to your core. And nobody, I don't even know if anybody understands how much work he puts into every single episode and uh the the research and the reaching out and and that like honestly it's something to be seen like people think that you just manifest manifest stuff out of the air <laughs> uh he does yeah, i mean he kind of does a little bit <laughs> me <laughs> yeah yeah Prince, no yes. but um that's a good point he, he works hard <laughs> at it as well you and now people are going this show he works oh, that oh, hard on this show on. he works that hard and this is the well, okay, um, <laughs> let's get on. That's enough said. Thank you for saying that. Um, and thank you for letting me letting me do this. Um, <laughs> no, seriously. And she's right. It brings so much joy. And I say it every episode, the gratefulness uh that I have in just somehow being a small part of this. Um and, and I Shecky says we gotta get going. I know he does. <laughs> and, and uh I get lost in the weeds. And 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 sometimes because of what you're talking about here, I kind of get lost in the weeds. This trip really encouraged me so hey for anybody who's a naysayer is like is this mike guy gonna go away this trip this trip filled the batteries um because he's coming low bigger <laughs> yeah um a lot of letterman people it turns out really like this show and i'll tell you this and you. if well and maybe me uh, perhaps but um the content that comes out of this show or whatever a lot of Letterman folks really seemed to like it and they came up to me and told me about it and encouraged me in so many ways. Uh, this trip, it just basically got me to the point where I just kind of want to redouble my efforts and go even more. And, and if you thought I was enthusiastic before, holy cow. Uh, if my, if our entire audience, if the Letterman podcast community was just the folks who came, who worked for, for, for Dave and company, I would do it just for them because of the words that they said to me during this trip. And, no. and, 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 and I, I, I holy cow, um, just really, really exciting. So, um, do you want to just kind of go through, we'll go through some of the trip and we'll, we'll throw, uh, some videos in and, and, and whatnot where, where needed, um, and kind of go from there. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so when you were a child, no, I'm scared. We're not going to. Ah. Um, so uh, you left on, it's, this is also, you know, it's funny because I'm a little bit of an anxious traveler, just a little bit. And you yeah, know, you're also vicariously an anxious traveler. It's not just when you travel. <laughs> well, it's when people that you me, love, why do I make you panic? Because you were packing at like the last second. And then you're like, oh yeah, the plane leaves at seven. So I'm going to try to get there for like 645. <laughs> and I'm like, 
having like these like I'm pretty relaxed when it comes anxiety to anxiety attacks. And he of course always gets on the plane and everything. But um, you know, there's two types of travelers in the world and we represent both ends. Yeah. So you Wednesday you uh were you took the red eye. Oh, I took the red eye Wednesday night. Yes. And and I did pack to the last night. I used to be a corporate tra- corporate trainer for Costco wholesale in another life. And and I traveled all around all the time. I'm very used to jumping on a plane and just going, you know, kind of rant, not randomly, but just, you know, um, loosely. And so, yes, I'm very calm about that. The red eye is coming from the West coast. If you're going to a city where, I mean, it's, it's, it's an expensive city. And also um, you want to truncate time and you don't want to spend an entire day going to the yeah, city you love in the air, that. take yeah. the red eye. Yeah, I agree. I love the red eye and I have no problem. If you can sleep on a plane. Um, and, and and I can. And so that was actually- Pharmaceutically, I can too. Pharmaceutically. Um, get me the Ativan stat. I didn't need that. So I, I, I got it dialed in. <laughs> left around 7 p.m uh western time and by like 9 30 i'm hitting i'm i hit the street 9 30 a.m i hit the streets yeah. of, of of new york because of that so okay so thursday so thursday morning yes you hit the streets of new york yes. you you exited the guardia yep and uh in queens in queens shout out to queens everybody home of rick Sheckman. Spider-Man. and spider-man thank you that's why, I, that's why he loves me yeah but where did you learn that you yeah let's see um <laughs> she listens yeah osmosis <laughs> <laughs> um so you it's okay so you 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 get out of that and you can't obviously check in obviously to your hotel until nope. that night so so there's a chunk of time what did you go do first thing i did was jump in a cab and go to steve weiner's steve and Lori's. okay so i have to say this is where i insert <laughs> I like you know we've said I love New York there's so much I love about New York I could I could make an entire podcast about hey I got an idea <laughs> I'm, <just kidding. laughs> I'm not gonna make a podcast about New York but I could but this is the time of all of the your trip I had the most FOMO are you kidding me not. yeah that doesn't surprise me actually I love Stephen Laurie yeah uh, they're like family and yeah, you know, Steve just... Weiner, original writer for late night with David Letterman oh. came up with the glass breaking gag at home for me, the New York subway and system the, and the baby one for our granddaughter, our granddaughter. Yeah. They so, thank it. you, Stephen Laurie. Um, yeah. and so you went to Stephen Laurie's yeah, they have an then... apartment on the Upper East side. And what'd you do? Um, well, we just hung out and, 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 uh, Lori is, um, she has the spiritual gift of hospitality. She is just one of the most. Martha Stewart has nothing <laughs> on Lori. In the cover of Sports Illustrated. <laughs> oh, there you go. Let's tell Lori that that would be funny. Pain. She would love. She would love to hear that. I got Hashtag one picture Lori of Lori. Someday. One picture of Lori, um, and it was it was a surprise, random shot, and she was smiling through very very gritted teeth. <laughs> She's I don't know so if I'll include. I don't know if I'll even include that one here, but. Uh, no, uh, Steve Weiner is brilliant. He is one of my favorite people to talk to because I love picking his brain. He and Shecky are very similar. And I mean, uh, you know, I, I got to know Steve through through Rick, of course. And, and, and Rick, as he helped curate the original guests of this show, Steve was one of the first people he sent to me. Steve only worked for Letterman's show for, you know, a year and a bit or whatever it was. Um, but really created some key foundational moments and then he went to work for robert klein and in a mickey mouse club and, and all that sort of stuff he's just awesome awesome guy he's written for criterion brilliant. Uh, which is amazing he's a br- he is absolutely brilliant yeah i love talking to steve and i more more i love listening to steve yeah. and 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 hearing his amazing insights we got a really cool plan for uh his next appearance uh that has to do with calvert DeForest, larry bud melman um that's going to be really cool. So we went to the went to their place, um, and 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 I mean, she had this amazing little spread out for me, and, and I mean, I had just gotten off the plane, so I wasn't that hungry. And, and but, but at the end of the day, um, I got them some Canadian maple syrup, and I was it was in the little <laughs> so Canadian, the little, yeah, well, the it's little like having a beaver pelt in, in the your bag, right? Well, that. <laughs> Beaver pelts next time. <laughs> next time, Stephen Laurie, you get some beaver pelts. Um, our mighty national animal. <laughs> oh, you don't love that. I love that. Love that Canada's national animal is a beaver. Um, anyway, hung, hanging out with Stephen Laurie's was great. 
Uh, beautiful apartment on the Upper East Side. It is classic New York. That's it. That's it. Like they classic. They represent New York. Oh, they are so New York, mm-hmm. these two. Uh, New York couple, just amazing. Um, oh, love them so much. And so then they thought it's a beautiful day. It was great weather while we were there the entire time. Well, I was there the entire time uh, while we were there. You were there in spirit with me. <laughs> um, g- amazing weather. And so they said, well, do you want to do like a brunch somewhere? We've got a, a special little cafe we'd like to go to. And this is where the magic began. Like the magic began almost immediately. This trip was filled with magic. Um, that's all I can say. And you'll hear it in a second here because New York is a gigantic place and randomly running into somebody doesn't normally happen. Um, it just doesn't, especially for, you know, a guy from Western Canada who has gone up to New York literally, uh, twice in the last, you know, well, three times in the last decade. Um, but they said, Hey, there's a diner near here where, uh, they use for location shoots for, um, only Murders in the Building, Steve Martin, uh, Martin Short, uh, Selena Gomez's show. Um, we should go there. Oh, yeah, let's do it. It's called The Mansion. If you're in New York and you go to the Upper East Side, check out The Mansion. It is an amazing diner. Just so, so cool. Lots of cool things about it. So I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Leave my luggage there. Let's go there. Let's go and, and have a brunch together. They had cleared their schedule for me so like i got to hang out with them the whole day which is a huge because they're busy people well, are busy they're they're super busy and 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 lawyer just, works in yeah broadway uh yeah well yeah uh she's in the broadway world and that's part of the story we we, we get so we're we're walking down we're catching up and having fun we uh i mean it's probably four or five blocks away from their house from their apartment and we get to the mansion and it was so funny. I'm sitting there looking at it, looking around and, and and trying to familiarize myself a little bit with it. And I'm just looking and I'm look and I and I look, and there's this guy sitting at one of the outdoor tables with a laptop in front of him, and he's just looking at me. <laughs> and I look and I'm like, I know that guy. Holy crap, it's Glenn Borders. Glenn Borders, who's guest on the show just a couple months ago, the head of special effects for, for Late Show, guy I've been talking to for years online. And Glenn looks at me, he's like, What the hell? And I'm like, What the like? And we look at him, huge, huge hug. Oh my god, Glenn, how you do? What are you doing here? He had he didn't know I was coming out for you know uh Rick's Memorial. And so it's like, oh my gosh. Then I got to introduce Glenn. To Stephen Laurie, Glenn, since uh, retiring from from uh, since Letterman finished the Late Show, you know, um, Dark Star of Harlem, uh, you know, the story of Josephine Baker that that's his that's his production. So he's on Broadway, and they're 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 looking, and then COVID kind of derailed him for a little while, and he's looking at uh, doing another run maybe next year. Well, Stephen Laurie had all these connections in Broadway, Amazing. so I introduced them. They've never met each other. I mean, we're talking two completely different Letterman eras. <laughs> But then they start cross. Oh, do you know this person? Do you know that person? Do you know like? And they start cross ball. Hey, let's trade cards. Oh, oh, it was the greatest thing ever. It was. It was like, and it was surreal. Like, how do you run into somebody randomly in New York? But we did, and so um, I know coincidences. Just uh, I do. I do not. I flat out do not believe in coincidences. And so anyway, this is like okay. So we talk for like half hour, forty five minutes, or whatever. Just you know, and make these connections. Then Glenn leaves. And uh, and it was so funny. Like he talked about a couple of the buildings in New York when he was on our episode. He just described them, right? And then he starts pointing. Hey, Mike, remember we talked about that? There's that building. There's that. Like it was this crazy Amazing. moment. It was so cool, and it was just so cool to give my friend a hug. Like yeah. just I, I haven't met him in the flesh, but he's my friend. So yeah, that was the first thing that uh, that we did. Then we went back to Stephen Laurie's, um, and I mean the day literally just doing that evaporated yeah so we get to like four o'clock yeah so i was just gonna say we gotta keep this uh yeah yeah, yeah. This, i apologize this podcast will take as long as your trip did ah yeah. it could it could uh so i know what they i know because you facetime you and you're there they put you on a boat they did and so they said okay so you're staying downtown and i'm thinking i'm gonna take a cab and all that sort yeah. of stuff. the lori who's one of the most thoughtful people in the entire planet yeah, yeah. she and says loves new york. and loves new york yeah. and knows new york um so they live close to the water as well and so they're like hey just a few blocks down this way um we're gonna go by the the, the mayor's mansion and and something else a few other things as well and and i don't want to completely pinpoint where they are but they are close to uh, a dock um, where you can go go on a ferry for like three bucks. 
and it takes you all around Manhattan Island. It takes you all around That's under right. all of the bridges. And I have videos of that uh, going under the Brooklyn Bridge and all these other bridges. My hotel was closer to downtown. Um, <laughs> I needed something geographically close to where Rick's Memorial was and 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 the Bitter End nightclub, which we're going to get to in a minute. Um, and so Lori was like, no, no, no. If you're going to go, we'll get you on the ferry. She paid the fare too, which was just, I was like, oh my God, you're yeah. so sweet. And so I said goodbye to them. But I got to see them two more times on the trip. So it was, yeah. so it was, it wasn't, you know. So you took the boat, you yeah. took it around, you took, you got to your uh, hotel. Yeah. Which was not a jumped off. So. <laughs> well, no, it was fine. It was fine. The hotel yeah. itself was fine. It was the location that you would have been uncomfortable with. Yeah. Like every exactly. night getting, Life. well, getting back to, it wasn't Brooklyn, but it was. <laughs> I don't I, Brooklyn's bougie. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it was, uh, it was just anyway. It doesn't yeah. matter. Okay. Nice hotel in the place of town you not would have not been comfortable with, but it was geographically uh, fine. The Lower East Side, let's just say that. <laughs> anyway, so I get so there. Get there, yeah. and then so so this is still this is we're still on Thursday. Yeah. So what happened? What where were you going that night? Okay, so throughout the day, I'm exchanging like text messages with Will Lee and an email with Paul Schaefer because I'm going to see them that night. At the legendary club in Greenwich you Village. Just over that. It's just, yeah, I'm just talking about Lee and Paul Schaefer. I <laughs> have to. Otherwise, if I think about it too much, I'll just yeah. I'll, I'll start short circuiting. Cool, I yeah. can't believe that that, yeah. that I can say that. Because that night, um Will and uh and Paul were playing um at the at the at the bitter end. Um and and it was just going to see them live was a crazy experience uh got to the hotel checked in unpacked everything and literally had to shower you know smack myself in the face a couple of times to make sure i stayed awake and and that wasn't necessary because the adrenaline kicked in the moment i got down there but um i i cabbed it down to greenwich village to the bitter end and i love the village as you know that's I my it's one of my favorite know. favorite places in new york um and i went to the bitter end the show i got the last seated ticket for the show which started i think at nine o'clock or 9 30 it, it started but it sold out so fast that they did an early they, they added an early show so i was messaging with will and the last message i got from will lee was mike it is imperative that we see each other tonight i have something for you <laughs> and for a guy who loves the letterman stuff and is also a collector there probably is no sweeter of a text to receive than that so when I get there, the early show is going on, but you can see the club is so small. There's only like a hundred and some odd. And I mean, like Stevie Wonder and, 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 and oh God, Joni Mitchell and, and, and um, you know, Bob Dylan, like amazing, amazing lineage in this club. When you go in this club, you feel the energy in the walls, mm -hmm. but it is small. Yeah. hundred and hundred and some odd people. Um, Rizzo, who, who runs the thing. I mean, it just, it, the bitter end is an amazing little club uh, with history. And clearly they're creating these amazing new moments as well. And I'm watching through the window. I'm watching Paul and Will playing uh, with Osnoy. And 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 and, and um, I forget the drummer's name, forgive me. Uh, but I'll put the poster up and whatnot. So you'll see who the, who, who the lineup is. But I'm just watching Paul and Will play together. They're sitting right beside each other. Paul is on an old school organ. He's got another keyboard behind, beside him. It's, it's very um, akin to my experiences seeing him on letterman and then will is just such a cool cat they're both so cool yeah. but will is just he's so relaxed own. and cool yeah he is in his zone in his element he is like if 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 cool cat the phrase a cool cat uh had a picture in the dictionary beside it it would be will lee when he's got his base and yeah. he's doing his thing um so yeah awesome. that was that was amazing so what did he have for you uh can i say <laughs> one thing before that yes okay so I'm sitting there looking through the glass and there's this young man who's also looking like we're kind of taking turns looking through the glass with about seven or eight people that were kind of milling about waiting to come into the late show. Um, see what I did there, the late show. Uh, um, <laughs> anyway, uh, one of the guys, oh. <laughs> ah, there Today. you go. There you go. Um, and as I'm sitting there looking through the window, um, and we're, we're sitting there kind of talking back and forth. Oh God, look at that. Listen to that moment and all that kind of stuff there's this 25 year old kid who it turns out he's a guitar player. I call him a kid, but he, he is, he's there with his parents. It turns out they came out from Philadelphia. I got the last seat at a table of four 
they're the other three. So it turns oh. out we're sitting beside each other, but we didn't know that at first. And and so we're just talking, oh my goodness, uh, like this, the electricity was so good. And as I'm talking, he was like, you're very familiar. <laughs> and I was like, uh, well, I said, I've actually had Will and Paul on my, on my, on my podcast. And he goes, you're the Letterman podcast guy. <laughs> Was not expecting that. Um, and the guy's name is Jesse, and 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 uh, I I was just yeah, and, and so we start talking. Experience. So he's like having a dream come true to see Will and Paul. So am I. So we're vicariously, and I mean I'm I'm you know twenty years older than him, more than that, uh, quarter century older than this guy, and and we're sitting there having this amazing communal moment, and and it was so cool. And and as we went in and got our seats and all that sort of stuff, I said, okay, Jesse, if 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 um um I said there's a chance that um I'm gonna be going back to the green room. And if that is the case, uh I I'm gonna bring you with me because I'm gonna need someone to take pictures and 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 whatnot. But yeah. then um we'll flip roles and I'll do the same thing for you. And he was just kind of looking at me like why might that happen? Like <laughs> it was, it was really, really cool. And then suddenly out of nowhere, there's Will and he comes out and he goes, oh, Hey, big hug. Paul comes out. Hey, big hug. And so that was so neat. And this is what Will had for me. He had two things for me. Um, it's imperative that we see each other because, and, and for those who are audio, what we're doing is we're Candy and I are putting up two t-shirts and these are original t-shirts. One of them has the original price tag on it. Paul Schaefer and the world's most dangerous band. I think they're from 87 it. where it's, you know, the original lineup uh, at the end of the late night run. So Paul and Will and Sid and Anton, and then I got a black one and I got a black one here. Um, and I mean, they're original. These are, you talk vintage, everything's vintage. And I mean, the original price tag of $15 way back in the day for a t-shirt talk about inflation, 15 bucks for this. Are you kidding me? Um, so I'll be wearing these on the show on future shows. Oh, the collectors are like, I yeah. wear that. oh, I know. I pay. Hey, I wear all he my stuff. All I time. wear. I wear my stuff that I collect. I uh, yeah. So watching these guys play was absolute magic. Awesome. I it was it. absolute magic. And then uh, highlights in the green room. So what we're gonna do now is we'll throw in some videos and and highlights of my time at the bitter end. <laughs> Should I do that? Yeah. <laughs> Do it again. Okay. Yeah, so you are. <laughs> Stop. Just to, I'll put this on out there. We'll oh, just keep it, story. keep it in. <laughs> okay. Keep it in arms. So life. we got to keep this going. So mm. the you got back to your hotel and you uh, basically passed out. Yeah, um, I walked around Greenwich Village in a stupor. I don't know if you remember the phone call that night. Yeah. I yeah. I kind of stumbled over the, like, and it wasn't because I was drunk. I was not, not no, even no. close. I wanted drink. to stay sharp. Yeah, I wanted to stay sharp because hanging out in the green room with these guys. Um, it's a rare day when you drink. I want to. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a huge drinker. I'm just yeah. not. Um, and so, yeah, I walked over to the comedy cellar and, uh, you know, is there another set tonight? No, man, you missed it. It's like, you know, one in the morning. Oh, okay. And 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 took a cab back to the hotel and passed out. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you woke up. It's Friday. Yep. Did you have plans set already on Friday or was yes. it sort of willy nilly? No, no, there was willy nilly for the Sunday. The Sunday was basically set up in case there was uh, random things or, or I needed to have some spontaneous things that came as a result of 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 the memorial and things like that. So but no, Friday was packed. Uh, started the day by going up to the Upper West Side to hang out with Jill Bayer. Uh, she's our, our guest on, on last week's or two weeks ago, I guess is episode. Mm -hmm. um, Dave's former assistant went on to work for SNL and friends and whatnot. And Jill is just like, she is a wonderful, wonderful person. I adore her. Mm -hmm. um, we had an amazing uh, coffee. 
um, outside of uh, uh, on the uh, on the patio of a cafe uh, on the Upper West Side. And we just had a ball nice. uh, and I got to pick her brain, which is really, really cool. Cause I mean, she's been in, she's been a writer in show business now for, uh, for a long, 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 long time. Um, started like as a 19 year old working for David Letterman. And that was her foray into show business and has been, um, you know, by coastal, you know, working on both the East and the West coast. And I just appreciate, oh, we had such a good, I got to pick her brain about so much cool stuff. Lots of little stories and things like that for when she comes on the next time we're curating kind of some more anecdotes for the next time. So Jill and I had a, we had a couple hours hanging out and just talking, um, yeah. at this cafe, uh, at that point you want to just keep moving. Uh, well, sure. Yeah. So Jill. Okay, so and then, Jill. And then you went, oh, this is the other thing that I had FOMO on because you went and you walked through another of my famous or my favorite spots in New York. Yeah, twice. Uh, I got to walk. Walked. Okay, so if I'm going to go from this part, I walked as much as I possibly could because I love Manhattan. Just love it. Which we did in October in. too. Like We, we walked we never a lot. Took, we actually never took a cab. No, we took cabs. We didn't take the subway. We took, we a, we took a few cabs. Just in and out. We didn't take cabs. No, because remember, we actually walked when we were trying to get back to the late show. Well, we did there. walk a lot. Yeah. Like, I mean, I yes. I went into a cab in, in New York. Okay. You might have when you were coming back from. I'm pretty sure if you check the tape on the original episode, <laughs> there will be moments of cab rides, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. Uh, we like to walk as much as we possibly can. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I got to I got to go back in my archives okay. okay so anyway so so you walked through central park <sighs> yes because it's like okay well if i'm gonna go from this place to this place oh well i guess i gotta cut through well, central I'll park and the it's most beautiful beautiful weather park. so i got lots of videos of that cutting through central park to go to steve young's and this was and, and for everybody who maybe knew steve young steve is. young is as far as i'm concerned um if there is a if there's a writer for Late Show with David Letterman that had the sensibility of the show just oozing out of him, pouring out of him, uh, the very fabric and the DNA of the voice of Late Show with David Letterman, it would be Steve Young. Steve Young, of course, worked for Late Night. O'Donnell brought him in. And and I mean, I, I personally, the narrative that I create in my mind is those two could be like you know, the master and apprentice or the, 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 the old school master Luke training the younger. Yeah. Luke and Obi-Wan. Yeah. Cause Steve I, Young is a Jedi Knight of comedy writing. The, look at you. With the know, Star Wars reference. I Luke and Obi-Wan was a great dinner. It me. is a really <laughs> great. Cause I look at Steve Young now as Jedi master Luke. Yeah. Oh yeah. We could go down this path very, no, very, very just, far. Sorry, I, okay. I interjected the start. No, you're right though. Like, and, and I just adore Steve and I love late show. Like there's so many people that are divisive late night versus late show. Yeah. I love late show and so much <laughs> and, and others. Um, and, and so anyway, Steve Young is the voice of uh late show personified. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just, and I mean, I want to, I'll tell you this, the healing power of laughter I, in Steve Young's apartment, we spent like three hours together. It was so fun. And it was a dream come true. And there's lots of little videos that I'm going to put in here. Um, some with context, some without, doesn't matter. But you some of the You better watch things, the YouTube. Well, for the YouTube, yeah. I mean, we'll have the audio and the videos too. But 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 Steve is just, he's effortlessly hilarious. Um, the deadpan clever, when Steve Young talks, you I, I have to listen very carefully because if you don't you might miss the joke that goes by and i i'm always terrified when i talk to steve that he <laughs> is saying hilarious things that either my mind is distracted i'm just not and i miss things they go by me because he is that funny but he's also that dry and deadpan and i just love the road that he's on right now he shared with me some of the comedy music that is just pouring out of him and there are parts where I was on the ground laughing so hard and they felt like unused late show material and then some. It was just such an uh, it was such a precious precious meeting. Mm. Um and 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 I mean we talked about all sorts of stuff. Uh I just 
and he 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 opened up you know some of the the collectibles that he has had from over the years. One thing that I loved, and I'll 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 I'll, I'll stop after this, and we can keep moving because as you said, we got to keep moving, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but he showed me one of the cultures of Late Show that I really liked, and I don't think it was just in the writers' room; it was also in um, it was it was the staff is that they would give each other gifts, and there are some staff members who at Christmas time or whatever it was, or Hanukkah, uh, or or whatever where they would give each other gifts that were extremely clever. And Steve showed me a couple of the gifts that he gave um, to the staff, to the staff that were absolutely hilarious. And there's one thing I want to talk about. I'm going to, I'm going to tribute Kathy Mavrikakis right now. Um, the last time when you were on, we showed a video of the flip book of Joe Grossman, the, the Joe Grossman flip book that Steve Young made as a gift and gave to all of the staff and Joe Grossman is this uh, not very demonstrative writer who just kind of sat there and, you know, a flip book is like a cartoon, right? You flip through it and you see the image moving and whatever. Well, they made a flip book of Joe Grossman. And it was just him sitting there the whole time you flip through it. And it's just him sitting there deadpan. Steve Young gives this out to the staff. It is extremely funny. Kathy Mavrikakis gets the gift she then goes painstakingly page by page and defaces the Joe Grossman flip book and, and animates it, literally animates it with graffiti around Joe and gives it back to Steve as a gift. Mm-hmm. And, and one of the treasures that he has kept uh, is the Kathy Mavrikakis regift of his original flip book. So I have a video of that. We're going to show that uh, right now. Awesome. You didn't do it. What? Oh. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, okay, so. Okay, so this is uh, the F- Joe Grossman Flipbook 2.0. I've talked about how much I love this thing, how smart it is. Um, Steve Young gave that to the staff one year for Christmas. And one staff member decided to be clever and give it back to him. So this is the Joe Grossman Flipbook 2.0. The amount of work it would have taken to do that. <laughs> can I show this on the can I show this on the podcast? Oh sure. Thanks, man. <laughs> Couple IDs. Oh look at this. The real old floppy disks. This was from the NBC <gasps> show. Oh. I don't know what you'd do with those now. Wow. There must be somebody who transferred them. I'll what would have been on there? Record collection stuff? No, or just just, just like, text, right? Yeah, just oh every day's act. One pitches or top tens or whatever. Wow. Uh, this was a, a very late version. I saved one every day. I had to uh, keep myself organized. Like I wrote the teases and fives, and then when they were approved, I could check those off. Uh, I don't even remember what that was. Monologue updates. I would have to like tell ten people in an email what was going on. I would have to say, "Here's our teases and fives." I'd, check extras against the monologue these were bits that would show this was a double taping day okay That's yeah what, and then what the hell was this oh this must have been a rundown of what actually made it into the monologue that day wow and what was this this is all one show I don't remember what this even is. So would you have written this like while the show was going on then some of it? Or is it all before? I guess, no, it's all beforehand, isn't it? It's, just... it's, it's during the day. I'm starting to fill in this grid with what's evolving. Gotcha. And this was late in the day, day but right before taping. And, okay, we think that's going to be in. We think this. Oh, no, that, that. No, we killed that. <laughs> wow. Oh, this was the uh, expense report, which at one point, I completely hand drew a facsimile of and would use that to submit my expenses on. It looks just, <laughs> I was just as you were saying that, I was going to say, man, back when I worked for Costco Wholesale, it looks very similar to the expense report, but it's something you hand wrote that just, just for the hell of it. Just the one person that I turned my expense reports into every month. I, every month I tried to do something strange to surprise her. So one month I made a hand drawn version of the expense report. You're a genius. It's kind of sad in a way. We're, <laughs> we're, we're already working at a comedy show. Isn't that enough? 
Isn't that taking up all your energy? Apparently not after a while. Wow. Oh, this was, uh, I only saved <gasps> one of these. You got a sponge. Oh, yeah, that's from the old show. And it's in phenomenal shape. Oh, this is a sex. <laughs> Where did yeah. I where did I see that you posted that's, that somewhere? That's in the documentary in a That's shot where it office. is. Yes, yeah. that's where it is. This is every day I would uh, keep track of uh, what made it into the monologue. Oh my! Gosh. We had uh, all right at like an hour before the show. Here's the 18 jokes that are in, and then some get cut, and then new ones get added, and the circles indicate the ones that Dave actually did. So I had everything with a. Day and date. I guess that's the final show. I wonder if there'll any be uh, any jokes about squirrels and their nuts in there. Oh, it's a hot day out there. I was walking through Central me. Park, and all I my mind kept doing every time I saw a squirrel was, I'm, oh, that is really cool. Wow, these are great too. But I'm not finding the one thing I was looking for, which was the, uh, the quiz. Yeah, I'll find that at some point. Okay, that's a. Oh, you got some of the... I got one of those on my desk. This is the original CBS pencils. Oh, yeah. Unsharpened, too. Look at you. There's the coin. More of the rejection postcards. That Zippo is great. Yeah, there was... I would say I usually did an interesting gift. Sometimes other years people did as well. You know, I'm just going to interject here mm. really quickly, but um, it's so funny because as you have gone through this year, now you're over a year of yep. doing the Letterman podcast, yep. um, you know, you've met these people and you, you've talked to them and it's so, because like, everybody you talk about just is to me so extraordinary and so fascinating like and they you know they have these stories and then they go on like you know talking about Steve and and this music that's coming out of him and and so artistic and um it's so like what a gift you have you you've been given to be able to uh in, not just interact but become friends with people who have a uh, lot of offerings yeah. for our our planet and our earth and to make it colorful and lively because if we didn't have those arts if we didn't have things like that we'd be really really bored so uh yeah i could not agree more can drink on this yeah. can you drink just water oh is that okay <laughs> yeah i thought this was going to become a different podcast yeah. shot 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 yeah the lights you know the lights of production of the letterman podcast cause beads of sweat um there you go uh so yeah no you're right and 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 i mean steve is near the top of the list of of, of these precious things and the story behind the story is exactly why we do what we do here um but there are so many people responsible for the creation of of, of yeah and i don't think of David people Letterman understand I, I certainly have never been around anything show busy in my life and uh I certainly did not understand the mechanics of what goes into these productions. Yeah. And it just makes you appreciate them so much more when you see them. Like, it's not just like, oh, I'm just going to flip on the TV. It's like hundreds of people. It's it's hundreds of talents. It's yeah. like, I think that's- And all of them having is as much, if not more personality yeah, than, than the principals on camera. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like there's a tapestry there. So I, I yeah. just want to, you know, kind of say that- um, Having your show on a show like this, <clears throat> um, WWP, uh, <laughs> is, wide pants. is so cool for people to understand that how it works and, and to even give it that much more appreciation. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, we have, you know, our world is so busy and we just kind of fly by and we don't, I don't think the majority of us give enough um, gratitude and appreciation for when you see these, these artworks 
what goes into them. So yeah, I think that you doing the show is doing that. Okay, we got to keep going. Thanks for saying that. Um, <laughs> so Steve Young. Yep. So after Steve and and the the cajoling we get yep. done with Steve, you have moved on and you are now heading into an amazing steakhouse. An right. amazing steakhouse. It's FOMO. Yeah. Oh. Rupert G and Mike Chisholm <laughs> hanging out in an amazing steakhouse, sharing a porterhouse for a couple hours, just shooting the shit. I and, love and, Rupert. Oh, how do you not? And and uh, Irene. Thank you. Yeah, and Irene. Oh, I'm thinking of you right right now, Irene. Um, and and I'll throw some pictures up here of me and Rupert. And I think I've got even a picture of us sharing the porterhouse. <laughs> Jay Leno would be proud. Um, although he would have eaten the entire porterhouse himself with a big gigantic stein of milk uh but rupert, <laughs> rupert and i we polished that thing cow. off like that's it's just like you just the whole cow the, it was oh, it was a good steak no it i mean been, with milk i know hey i don't know it's not my story right. i just like okay, to repeat yeah. it yeah. um i uh i uh had so much fun uh just shooting the bull with uh, shooting the bull <laughs> with rupert we had so much fun and just you know he loves to give advice uh to me as well and i just appreciate all of it yeah take it um because i mean you know he, the, he's a central hub of the family uh that was david letterman and company no question and hello um, deli is the official sponsor and of the, the podcast. by the way the hello deli uh the only official the only spot uh, sponsor of the letterman podcast um go to hello-deli.com if you want to get any late show with david letterman merchandise and i don't know how much longer it's going to be around and it's in incar its current incarnation because the thing is up for sale we did talk about that i'm not going to talk about any details about that there are there are suitors uh things are in motion that yeah, is i had the money i did oh well paul that's where i was so nervous on paul's episode at the very end i'm like hey the hell days for sale and paul's like hey let's buy it like <laughs> oh my god and i kind of i was so nervous next time paul's on the show i won't be nearly as nervous um but yeah it's 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 uh it's the end of an era is coming so rupert and i had so much fun um he would not let me take him out i wanted to so badly no and no you're i'm a sponsor <laughs> it's part of the sponsorship and oh, yeah generous, generous, and, generous. and i will tell you this uh i'm not a huge drinker but one of the things you know i love is is, is a good scotch, scotch oh and scotch yeah we didn't have one we had scotch uh rupert and i drank scotch together and it was it was yeah, really great um yeah and we traded we traded lots of stories um he is he is proud of uh, he loves us and 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 he is proud so proud of what it is that we're building and 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 he's um because he knows all these stories that you're talking about mm -hmm. like rupert more than maybe anybody knows all these stories that you're and, talking and about so, that yeah. may yeah and and um he, i can only imagine what the walls hold in that place that's the thing and and it can't be like like i i love what dana carvey and david spade are doing with fly on the wall uh talking about saturday night live and and whatnot I don't know that with this culture of people in worldwide pants, I don't think because they're so self-deprecating and they, they minimize so much of what they do. I don't know that anybody inside could host this show. I think it takes somebody outside to host this show. Um, and I mean, I, I'm just grateful that it's, you know, me, because there's so many more people who are more talented. That's self-deprecating. Okay, well, Hi. Okay. <laughs> that being said, um, and, and, and we talked about that, and how it just for this group of people it needed to be an outsider and that was just huge an outsider with for me. the most uh insatiable love though uh, well there's no yeah i mean like I and this love. is with the combination yeah. right that needed to happen it couldn't just be like you can't just have somebody who's like yeah you know this is cool like you have an insatiable love for uh all things Rachel. also the pasty whitest uh podcast host out there to no complexion whatsoever i'm not a vampire folks uh you know that's 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 who it takes to host the letterman podcast just this uh odd huh that's a prereq well i don't know it's just <laughs> okay so you went anyway dinner, dinner with rupert and then you i think you ended up early i walked back the hotel yeah and you went to bed that was a two and a half hour walk uh the, the, all the way down through times square all the way down uh got lost was supposed to you know my hotel's near the manhattan bridge i ended up down at the brooklyn bridge yeah. it was like this crazy experience got back to the hotel uh around midnight um and then went to sleep and the next morning the next day was check fest it was, okay it so was, we're on saturday yeah so, so and the here's the, for the trip yeah the reason for the whole reason for the trip 
that guy right there, right behind Candy's left shoulder, Rick Sheckman. Uh, that was uh, one of the pictures that was at Sheckfest. Here is the the, the program. Um, go to the go to the official channel. Make sure you watch. Uh, please, please. I think it's like ninety minutes long, but it is so beautiful. Um, there's there's my boy right there. There's my boy right there, and the entire program of events. Sweet. There's Shecky. Um, hmm. Yeah. Anyway, he uh, that was a uh, an absolute uh, surreal, surreal thing. It was at a movie theater. And if you know Rick, um, you know, Leonard Malton spoke at his funeral. And if you know who Leonard Malton is, uh, us growing up, there was no other movie critic that had a higher um, status in pop culture or regard than Leonard Malton. He is um, and, and, and he's a contemporary of Rick's in the film world. And Rick had all of these amazing worlds that a lot of people just didn't know about like when morty was on the on, on our show he talked about that he talked about how he didn't realize until rick passed how many different worlds rick had they all thought he was just this guy that would uh that that, that ate sl slept and breathed the show which he did but he also ate slept drank breathed other things as well and and, and this memorial here uh was a celebration where a lot of these things got to come together and people got to compare notes. Like, oh my God. Like, yeah, there were all very sorts layered of individual, very, very much so. So I will do my very best to truncate this experience um, because there was a lot of Letterman people there. And I mean, it's at a movie theater and um, we started out in the foyer of the movie theater and just a lot of mixing and talking and all of that. And I mean, Stephen Laurier there, of course, Alex Bennett, who's been on the show, Rick's best friend of 45 years. Spoke. Uh, yeah, he followed Dave. He, as soon as Dave's video ended, Alex Bennett went up and, and, and spoke. And it was just surreal to see these two legends in broadcasting following each other. Yeah. Um, so that was amazing. Um, <laughs> this is where I was kind of blown away because I, I didn't know. Like, I... I I honestly, I was nervous and I thought because this family is so tight, uh, this Letterman family is so tight, I wasn't sure if like I would come in and people would be like, mm, there's a Letterman podcast guy, I got to stay away from him. And certainly there might have been people who did feel that way, I don't, but I certainly wouldn't have known who they were because of the people who kind of like rushed up, like... Ugh. Oh gosh. Um, Pat Farmer coming over and we've never met like Pat Farmer and I have traded emails and stuff. He comes over big hug and I'm like, mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. And Pat's like, Oh, I guess I got to figure out, we got to figure out how to do this soon. Right. Oh. And it's like, yeah. Okay. Yes. And and I did not, there was only one person I asked if they would come on the show the entire time I was there. And it was, and it was more, it was tongue in cheek. Cause I knew she would never do it. It was a joke. It was meant to make her laugh. I didn't ask anybody there. Um, if they would come on who I hadn't even either previously talked, I didn't ask anybody. I didn't, I, that wasn't, wasn't what this defensible. day was about. No, it yeah. wasn't what it was about. Yeah. Um, uh, but Pat comes up to me and a few people came up to me and said, Oh, well, I guess I got to come on. Like that was really cool. Um, but like, yeah, Pat and, 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 and then I'm going to get Alex's wife, Alex Bennett's wife, um, Marjorie, who I adore. Her. Oh, Marjorie's so great. I've never met her, but I just watched the, the I watched the live in the park. <laughs> And I, she's like kind of my hero. Marjorie's Miller is awesome. Alex yeah. Bennett's wife. Yeah. So I'm going to get her an orange juice and I hear from behind me, oh, they'll let anybody in here. And I turn around and look and it's Dave's guy. I've talked about Dave's guy on the show here before. Dave's executive producer. And I'm like, hey man. And uh, we had this. Did you, did you pee your pants? I did not. Not even a little did I pee. Um, I did not drink anything that morning. For that very reason. <laughs> My urinary tract was clear. You preempted an accident. On purpose. Good job. Thank you. Thank um, you. And 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 he and I spoke, talked to each other, and and it was funny because as he and I are talking, and we talked about the U two special and some other, like just it was surreal because I felt so warmly welcome. And and remember the the, the picture, the the two pictures, right? You know. Um, this happened. The signature on the picture happened. This one here. Hello, Mike. Nice to see you. David Dave's Lennon. guy. Dave's guy. But who made that intro? It was Shecky who made the yeah. intro. And Shecky let him know, hey, this guy's going to be in California. 
He's not crazy. Yeah. But he's got a kind of a special story here. And 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 I got the two copies of the picture yeah. signed because of Shecky and 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 Dave's guy. And so, but we didn't even talk about like we just talked. Mm-hmm. Now I will tell you this. As he and I were talking, I was present, but I also kind of looked around a couple times and I saw a few like Letterman staffers looking over and going. Inst- Instacred. Well, <laughs> I don't know if it's Instacred. I do know that there was a little bit of, Instacred. there was a little bit of Dave's guys talking to the Letterman podcast guy. Yeah, like there was a Instacred, bit of that. Yeah. And I was like, oh, we went into the auditorium. Uh, that was amazing. And I'm so glad. Thank you very much for, th- thank you to all the, the Letterman people um, who made me feel as welcome as they did. We went into the auditorium and it was kind of like a movie theater that was just filling up for a movie, you know, but everybody knew each other. And so there were people saying, hey, to each other from across the thing, you know, and I turn around and look, there's Joe Grossman. And I mean, I I wanted to go up and give Joe Grossman a huge hug, but he's not that guy. He's the most introverted person in the whole world. And so I got a little thing, Vinny Favali, you know, Mikey, Vinny, hey man. Like, like, and it was, oh, Vinny's going to come on the show again for his second appearance uh, in the next month here. But I didn't get a chance to give him out. He, they took off right after the, the memorial. They didn't go across the bar, the, the street to the bar, but, you know, and lots of, hey man, Eddie Brill comes bounding up to me. Huge hug from Eddie Brill. Um, and it was just, it was so, I was so welcome. I was well, so I think welcome. You've been, you've been accepted into the fold. And one of the things is, is I think it's, you are, you aren't threatening you. And, you know, you've said this from the very beginning. And I think this is one of my favorite things is the intent behind the Letterman podcast has always been about highlighting, you know, this incredible work. It always is positive. There's never, you've never, ever, gone down that road because you've never wanted to and never will you know of any sort of anything malicious intent oh yeah you are just scandal and gossip can go live somewhere else yeah like you are just saying this is like let's just highlight the incredible individuals that made this thing happen and i i think you know were i in that world i'd be i'd be very i'd be very happy with that i think and so i feel like you've been sort of accepted in because that has is a very clear intent that you've never wavered from in the you know, 400 plus days that you've been doing this. I appreciate you saying that. Thank well, you. Um, so anyway, I, I just, a couple more things yep. about this yep. and then we're just, we'll okay. wrap up in yep. a minute here, but yep. uh, about 10 minutes left. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. I, it, I just have to go to work. I know. <laughs> 10 more minutes. Yeah. That sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, after the, the presentation, which is available on the Letterman channel, please go watch it. Rick, just in, uh, let's all just say, we love you, Rick. Yeah. Um, it was so powerful and 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 produced with love. Thank you, Kathy and Randy and everyone else who was a part of of, of this. Oh, and Rebecca Sheckman. Um, I gotta say that too. Okay, so <laughs> after we go out and 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 Rebecca, Rick's niece, she and I kind of connected right as he was passing and passed a little, and we connected online and 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 um, you know shared some moments and. and I had a bunch of people, uh, the episode that we did on the Letterman podcast, the tribute episode to Rick, I had a bunch of Rick's family come up to me and and hug me and say, thank you very much for the tribute to well, him. And that, that felt great, eh? holy shit, did that, that there, there actually wasn't a better feeling. And I had some good feelings. There was no better feeling on this entire trip um, that a couple of his nieces and, and a few other family members came up and, and, and they talked about the tribute show we did for Rick on, on, on this program. Um, that was incredible. Um, but Rebecca came up to me and, and she and I kind of, we just have this little kinship. I, I just, there's a, there's a little connection there. And she's wearing a Batman shirt with a, a suit jacket over top. She's like, he's just perfect. Like right exactly my wavelength. And she walks up with that picture of Rick and he's holding the cat Stevens album and that, 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 that big black and white shot. And that was one of the pictures that was up and she walked up to me with it. And she's like, would you like this? And I'm like, yes, I would very much like this. She goes, I kind of thought so. And, and, and she gave it to me and I said, Hey, can you do me a favor though? And she said, yeah. I said, don't tell anybody that you gave me this. <laughs> I want, and, and I was specifically you thinking, to think you swiped it. Yeah, I, did, I did very much. So I so wanted naughty. I, I very much wanted that. And, You're and, uh, <laughs> um, and actually, since I've come back, she's messaged me a couple of times. Hey, where did you get that picture? Yeah. It's just very funny. Um, but she did. She gave it to me, and uh, 
Um, I'll show a couple pictures alongside this about that. Um, and in the foyer afterwards, then there's a bar across the street and they had created an open bar situation where we could just go there and hang out. And, um, and we're in the foyer, we're about to walk across the street and I, there's Steve O'Donnell, big hug. Oh my gosh. Steve O'Donnell, Steve Weiner and me talking. Oh my gosh. There's Steve Young from yesterday, you know, saw him yesterday. Uh, his, one of his videos was shown and, 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 and all of this crazy moment seeing us all talking and all that. And then I turn and I look and there's a guy pointing at me and it's Robert Morton. And I'm like, oh, come up, huge hug. And Morty and I sitting there talking, meeting in the flesh for the first time. That was crazy. Um, so cool. So, so, so cool. That's when I saw Walter. Walter comes up. Hey, and I love meet Nancy. I, well, that's another FOMO, right? Yeah, I know. I know you love Walter. And so, yeah, he's so cool. Brilliant. Yeah. He's so cool. And just fun and just, yeah. He has that same kind of optimism that. Yeah. I have um and love for Letterman. Yeah, and 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 he introduced me to Nancy officially so I get to see Nancy and 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 all of that. So that was cool. And then it's like, "Okay, let's walk across the street." So me, Steve Weiner, Alex Bennett, and Robert Morton, I I call it my, <laughs> Steve Weiner. I it's like I the talk new, about it. New rap back. Well, he he's like, "It's your nerd Ocean's 11 moment." <laughs> I feel like the four of us kind of walked across the street. Did one of you trip? No one <laughs> tripped. No one tripped. That's okay. And we walked across no the street, and I had a martini with Robert Morton. Um, and 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 amazing conversations. A bunch of more people came up to me and were like, "Hey!" and and tell me about the show. Jay Johnson and I had this crazy awesome conversation. And this is the last part I'm going to talk about. The, the the only other person that I said, "Hey, you want to come on the show?" I didn't even say that. Mary Barkley. So Dave. <laughs> yeah. So legitimately. The Holy Grail. Well, one of, one of the Holy Grail. Well, it's not, it's, see, it's not about that because Mary would never do this show. There's in a million billion trillion years, there's no way Mary would do this show. I know that I, I just know intrinsically that she and I would have a very good dialogue because she is like <laughs> one of the, I, the way that I would describe Mary Barkley <laughs> in person, but also on there. Cause I mean, if you watch Dave's videos, Mary is a fantastic cat. She just is. She's a fantastic cat. She's intriguing and aloof and very much herself. And you almost want to like, like she is just so charismatic, but also just so a cat is a perfect way to describe her. And we're in the bar and it's a small bar. And and, and so Mary, I'm, I'm just, I'm talking, I think I was talking with Morty at the time. Or might have been Walter. I don't. I don't remember. But we're in the bar, and Mary kind of comes by me, and I. I look, and I'm like, I have to introduce myself. Like I have to. And I kind of look at her. I'm like, Hey, Mary. My name's Mike. I'm. Uh, and and she looks at me, and I know she. She knew who I was, and that part. Mary Barkley knows who I am. Holy shit. And so I'm like, Hey, I'm Mike, and 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 and, and do the handshake thing, and I'm like, I'm afraid of you. <laughs> And she started laughing. And it's legit. I am. I'm totally, I'm totally intimidated by her. Just for the record, a lot of women would love to hear that. I'm not kidding. I love it. Like when, if somebody says they're afraid of me, there's like this certain thing. Like, and I'm like, oh no, no. But inside I'm like, yeah. So um, she probably that was probably a good comment. She's amazing. And I watched her and Robert Morton get introduced to each other for the first time, which was bonkers to me as well. It's like, what the hell? You're like a little conduit. Uh, no, I didn't introduce them. I just watched it happen. And it's mm -hmm. like, you know, for, for, for Letterman nerd culture, that's a pretty big moment. Anyway, um, lots more out of that. Like that's as much as I'm going to say kind of publicly about Shecky's uh, memorial. Go watch it. Um, after that, I was in a weird, like weird emotions. As you can imagine, that was four or five hours total of weird stimulus. I actually ended up going to Shake Shack with Alex Bennett um, and Marjorie and Stephen Laurie after. Um, cool moment. The last thing I'll say, they were leaving the bar early. They came, they appeared at the bar and they're like, let's get out of here. Much, yeah. Not their crowd or whatever. I, I don't even know. I shouldn't say not their crowd, but it was a lot of stimulus. Yeah, and I mean, and I mean, Alex and, and, and yeah, anyway. Um, and I'm there with them and I was kind of go, Oh, you, okay. We're leaving. And Lori puts her hand on my shoulder and she goes, you have to stay here. <laughs> she's like, um, she's like, Mike, this is your moment. Oh, don't make me cry. I don't cry. I'm, I'm just, a, yeah. I'm a hard bitch. Don't make me cry. 
and she and she like was like you need to stay here mike and i was like but you're i'm here with you guys and Aww. and and so they she went across knows. the street to shake shack and and yeah and i was there another hour hour and a bit or whatever and and so i got out dumbstruck awestruck by these moments and uh and i called her and i said i appreciate you telling me to stay there and she said well we're at shake shack still i'm like oh what and so i went across the street and i got to hang out with them nice. for a few more minutes before they left Beautiful. um the rest of the day i walked back to the hotel straight from there i walked through soho Ugh, yeah. wow. bought a pair of jordans um Sugar. and then we get to the then we get to the last day so yeah so that was saturday so 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 much um so uh sorry just living vicariously through you and so home um so <laughs> the last day so this is sunday now because you leave on yeah. monday yeah this is sunday now yeah. so you get up in the morning and go to Stephen laurie's for brunch again yeah. another more fomo yeah yeah. Okay. yeah uh we talk about the day before and right. kind of decompress we go back to the mansion as well uh because that was just such a good experience we to get. oh we're gonna go next yeah. time we're in new york the four of us are going for yeah. sure yeah um and maybe other people like O'Donnell. All of you. People. Hey, you can come with us. Um, and and then after that, uh, another walk across the park to go to Don Giller's. Right. Um, that was fantastic. Don didn't end up coming to the memorial. Right. Um, too public, too much with sure. COVID and all that kind of stuff. And right. and and I appreciate where he's coming from. You know, he wants to. Hey, um, everybody's got now, a journey. This is where we're going to truncate a major part of this trip because Don Giller has actually in theory, agreed to come on the Letterman podcast. So all the videos and things that I shot from Don Giller's apartment, when we have him on um, soon, because he's got some, there's some cool Shecky stuff that we can talk about now publicly kind of for the first time. And so Don was like, you know, maybe I can come talk about it on the show. I'm like, yeah. Oh, so we're going to talk about that. So I hung out with Don. So good to hang out with Don. Don and I then go to Steve O'Donnell's apartment. Right. And we hang out in Steve O'Donnell's apartment. The three of us hanging and Don and I, I can tell when Don's excited because he gets chatty and that, and he was talking like we had so much fun mm. and, 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 and Steven, I, I, I'm so grateful. Now for did Steve Steven and Don know each other? Steve O'Donnell? Yeah. And Don know each other? Yeah. Yes. Prior to this? Okay. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Oh okay. yeah. Cool. Um, and, and Steve O'Donnell, again, one of the, the greatest writers ever, mm -hmm. uh, for late night, um, head writer for so long and just, just such an amazing guy, um, hanging out with him and Don was so great. And then Don, we, we let's go for dinner. Okay. So let's go get Chinese. Okay. So we go and Don was like, no, I think I'm going to go back and you know, to public again. No problem. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks Don. Love you. See you later. Um, we'll show pictures of that uh, here. And then um, Steve and I went for this amazing Chinese dinner. Yeah. A uh, Chinese food dinner in the Upper West Side. It was so good. Uh, love him so much. Yeah, I just love Steve O'Donnell so so much, and I'm so grateful. I was for supposed him. to meet him. You sure at were the last I, at the last uh, our trip in October, and yeah. that was like probably the only regret I had of that trip is that I had gotten sick. Yeah, I just, randomly, uh, random, and it was I just had was not feeling well and needed to spend the night in the hotel. So Mike went, and I was really sad because. Everything that I had heard about him, I would have loved to have spent time with him. Okay, so the the narrative for why you weren't on this trip, yeah, that I said to everybody, which is not a lot. Do they think I'm the snuffleupagus? Do they nah, think no, they know. No, nah, yeah. Oh yeah, sure, Mike. Yeah, <laughs> you have this this beautiful, charismatic wife. Sure, you do, Mike. <laughs> um, no, <laughs> but something happened to you a couple of days before we left. Oh my god! Yeah. So Morty at the few. At the memorial, Morty's like, so where's this? Where's your wife? <laughs> your wife. <laughs> she got bit by a black widow. What? It's so true. It's so true. And for a few key people who I said that Look, to, she got bit here. by a black widow. There's it's the, yeah. There's a little bit left of it, yeah. but it was like this big. It like, was bonkers. She got bit by a black widow. I go so sick. <laughs> I, and I do know. I the, there will be a comment in this section of what superpower did you get? I've tried. Not I've yet. tried everything. I've got I... climbing up walls. How do I do that? Lissai, her only superpower is still just being so awesome. Oh. Um, but anyway, yeah, so that's funny. That's funny. That's so funny. Steve and I talked about that at dinner. I'm like, yo, she got bit by a black widow. What? Sure. <laughs> is she all right? And you know. Um, 
That's and and he said something, he said a couple really funny things about it. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. That so, and then again, it's the last night. I'm like, okay, I'm going to walk back to the hotel. Oh, okay. And this is my last and final FOMO. And this is the last and final FOMO. So I'm walking, we're on like 108th street. If you'll remember the show is on Broadway and 53rd. I make my way over to Broadway and then I just straight shot down go through Columbus circle, the whole nine yards, walking, walking, walking. And it's getting dark now. And uh, as I'm going, I'm like, this is the first time I'm going to be passing the Ed Sullivan theater. Mm. And this is, it's a good place to end the podcast. Cause, cause this is a crazy thing that happened to mm -hmm. finish the story here. Um, as I'm walking by, I'm at like 57th street. And I'm like, Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to live stream this. Cause it's the first time. And so I start live streaming it and I start walking down. You can find it on the, the Letterman podcast group uh Facebook. i've got the video up in there and i'm walking through uh talking a little bit about how we're gonna go see the, the colbert marquee mm -hmm. um and i have a little a couple little fun moments there. i tried to manifest it i tried to turn it back into <laughs> letterman's marquee um and i'm sitting there live streaming going walking through and it's like okay i'm gonna go see the hello deli even though they're closed and whatnot this might be the last time if the new owners come in and they change things i may never see that green awning yeah. in person again and yeah. stuff. so I walk around and as I'm sitting there looking around, I'm looking <sighs> and the lights of the deli are on. I'm like, oh shit. Oh my God, May's here. May, 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 May. And oh, there's May. And, 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 May. and this is all, none of it was staged, by the way. I've had a couple of people ask me, that live stream you did with May, that's like an episode of the Letterman podcast. Did you stage that, right? No, did not yeah, stage it. May sees me. Oh, she just God. got she back comes from out. a trip. She just literally got back from Hong Kong. Yeah. And 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 she comes out, huge hugs, and we start talking about things and whatnot. We go through things. And that's where um, I look as, as I go into the deli. Deli's been closed. While she was gone, the deli has been closed. Yeah. And I certainly hope that Rupert and May can figure out a way, but when the sale happens, that they can have a month or so where everybody can go and do one last pilgrimage to the Hello Deli. We'll have to go back. Oh, that's absolutely. I totally agree. Uh, the late show staffers would certainly love it because it's been it's been kind of up in the air. It's been closed a lot. If they can have one more month and we can talk about that, hopefully that does happen. Yeah. Just throw it out to the universe right now. Yeah. But so it's been closed. And I'm looking around. You can tell she's like cleaning things up and getting ready. I don't know if it's getting ready to open or getting ready to move or whatever it is. But I look and there's these two crew hoodies. Here's one of them. The only way you get this. And this matches the jacket from that year. So see the Worldwide Pants logo? Back on. And you're going to put yours back on. And then there's one. the one for Michelle, which we, I have the, the, the Letterman you jacket for this version. You actually got to tell me what the M stood for. May didn't know this. And this was a cool thing. So so 2012's Letterman right. jacket, there, we go. there you go, has the patch and it has the M in the middle. The M is for Michelle, the um, makeup artist who passed. And, and, and it was such a, a thing for the, it was such a, a moment for the family that 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 year's crew jacket and hoodies these are crew hoodies this is the first crew hoodie that i've ever gotten um i've got a few of the jackets but and 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 may has them and she's cleaning out some of her things because if she moves back or whatever she's doing she needs to get rid of some of it and so she wants to pass it on to people and they're sitting there and i'm like uh yeah i'm 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 i'm, I'm, I'm having them <laughs> some yeah. things i wanted to buy them and then when she found out it was michelle's tribute one she's like no i can't take your money for this and it was just this crazy moment yeah. um yeah and we've great. since come home and you have fallen in love with it i love this we got to figure figure out we're going to do some more giveaways here I know. uh I but we, uh, we'll figure something out something. <laughs> we'll figure something out but yeah you fell in love with it immediately it and uh like kind of a jam i'm yeah. not gonna lie so anyway that is how the trip finished and then the next morning i'm to the airport and then it was the trip from hell coming home but that's okay well I mean, you got delayed. It I wasn't. Got, yeah. But you know what you did, speaking of hell, you managed to escape hell the day before they became enveloped in Armageddon. Uh, yeah, New York the next day, the smoke rolls in and it becomes this, you know, post that's a, post that's a Mike Chisholm. World. That's a, he chisholm his way out of that because that does happen for him. Like he sort of, you know, avoids that certain situation but it, you know like being in the west we're very much used to smoke yeah smoke but, fire season is is a real deal yeah but uh i don't know like i think you know the, this is probably a perfect storm because it came down from canada you're welcome new york um <laughs> from eastern and, canada from not from eastern, us yeah like uh and i think the buildings kind of trapped it to be honest yeah. like i feel like you know it was just sort of this the space um but man they they that was they got crazy. it big time yeah. You know, I'm one, I'm a weather nerd and I always look at like air quality. <laughs> 
it's just weird because I don't have enough things going on in my life apparently <laughs> uh and you know like I always joke about LA I love LA but you know the smog and the air quality coming up from compared to western com- Canada compared to where, where we are yeah. which is like all super it's super wooded and yeah it's just very different and uh so like you know usually our air quality is like one you know on the on the scale and and LA is always around like 80 which is like I'm like oh I can barely breathe they were like 363 yeah. i mean you yeah you can't go out without like some sort of breathing apparatus so yeah you managed to escape that so well done so even though you had a very long trip home i'm glad that you uh weren't there because i don't even know if you could have they couldn't fly out that i don't know if flights got canceled or not yeah. but it was it was weird and and and, and it was crazy the next day like because the trip home was like 36 hours it was you but getting gotten, like, getting nights. messages getting messages from people that I had just hung out with and showing me pictures of what was yeah, outside their balconies wild, or whatever. Yeah. Like Steve Young had a bunch of really cool pictures from the rooftop patio or whatever it was yeah. that he was, he was taking pictures of. Um, but anyway, that was, that was the trip. Um, well, if I couldn't have gone with you, at least I got the consolation prize of talking about it. <laughs> I can't tell if she's being sarcastic or not. That's my I can't tell if she's, if that's a dig or if it's legit, it's gonna cost you dinner to find out. That's our marriage, right there, folks. Um, uh, no, in all seriousness, I actually I very much enjoy coming on here, and uh, you know, I'm sure your your listeners are all like, "Who is this chick?" But um, no, they're all like, "Can she host the show?" No, please? stop. Uh, but I do very much. Thank you for thank you for asking me to do the recap. It was really fun, and it um, you know again. The, again, this is this what I love about what you're doing here is just this unbridled enthusiasm. You know, that's one of the things I'll say, and I think I might have even said this the last time that we hosted this together was um, Mike is just he's such a unique individual in the sense of, you know, it's hard for some people, especially when you get to be a certain age to even have one passion. <laughs> like, you know, you just sort of are like what's your goal is to survive the day without <laughs> taking another's life. Um, but, you know, Mike has these uh, incredible passions. Like he, uh, and that's what really attracted me to him. You know, he, he loves Jordans and he loves his LA Kings and, you know, and I always knew that Letterman was a big deal for him. And uh, to watch this come into what it blossomed into what it's blossomed is a very proud moment for me and you deserve it. You deserve it because he's looking at him all uncomfortable. He's like, oh, fidget, fidget. <laughs> but it's true. You deserve it. And all of those people, like, I know it's hard for you to understand maybe sometimes why, like, why would they want, you know, why would they be so kind and whatnot? It's because of who you are as an individual and, you know, try to prove me wrong on that. But you've got the great, those biggest heart, you doing it with the purest of intentions and that comes through and they were lucky lucky to meet you oh thanks for tuning in i don't know what to say about that um thank you i love you thank you for letting me do this and uh but don't you look super official you do tell me about your show you do you gotta do that you gotta you gotta you gotta get this down you gotta get this yeah you know you gotta get that um and then you gotta learn how to wing them but that that'll that's okay that'll happen in a future uh, future episode um thank you for saying those things uh i don't know what to say about that so i'm just gonna gloss over it um huh. this has been uh, uh the recap episode so the next time we go to new york let's can we make this a, a tradition every time we do something in new york or something like major letterman yeah. centric happens can we do this yeah this is fun so if anybody um, wants to you know to sponsor our trip to <laughs> so you can do that that's why right we there. would like make right you there. proud not rolling in it but would love <laughs> to go back to new york rolling in grass rolling and publicly cut grass Otherwise. at our granddaughter's favorite park <laughs> um but but we are grateful um yeah that is uh Thank you very much for this. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for doing this. That is another episode of the Letterman podcast with Thank Mike you, Chisholm. Shay. Thank you. Oh, and yeah, Shay. Thank you for that. With Thank Mike, that. Candace, and Shecky. Shecky will always be part of this. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Candy. Appreciate that. Candace Chisholm, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that is another episode of the Letterman podcast with Mike Chisholm. Coincidentally, I am Mike Chisholm. Thank you and good night. Overcoat and underpants.